Hello, I'm Elias, driver and engineer from the team Red Bull Drift Brothers. And today we are on our way to PTB Racing. So PTB Racing, owned by Kai, they started actually their business with balancing flywheels. So whenever you have a flywheel, it is spinning sometimes at a really, really high RPM. And it is very important that the mass is distributed correctly around the spinning axis. You probably know it if you have something off center spinning at a really high RPM, it will start to vibrate and break bearings and make everything bad. So that's where he started off with balancing flywheels for, yeah, like first of all his friends because he was working in a balancing company in the beginning and all of a sudden he realized that it's very hard to get an aftermarket flywheel for let's say a tuned engine or a sports car or something like that and yeah then he, he did the first couple flywheels for modified cars and the customers were super happy and so he decided to yeah to build his own business out of that and what is really cool about it they produce everything in-house here in Germany and this is something that yeah gets kind of rare these times so made in Germany and I'm really looking forward to see all the machinery that they have there and to finally meet Kai in person The basic function of a clutch is that you can disconnect the engine from your rear wheels. So basically the clutch is in between the engine and the gearbox. And if you press the clutch pedal, you disengage the clutch. So it's disengaged. So the engine can spin freely and also your rear wheels can either stand still. So there's no connection as soon as you release the clutch pedal. The clutch connects again and then the engine and the rear wheels are coupled together. In drifting there's a bit more to the clutch than only like changing gears and connecting the rear wheels to the engine. We use it quite a lot for all kinds of stuff. First thing we needed if we are on the start line we definitely need to press the clutch put it in first gear, wait until we got the start signal and then modulate the clutch out and increase the RPM that we have a good clean start because we want to leave the start line as fast as possible. We can use the clutch, in our case we also can shift without the clutch. However, as soon as we initiate and need the e-brake, we need to press the clutch. Each time we pull the e-brake, you need to press the clutch and you always have to release the e-brake first and then re-engage the clutch again because if you do it vice versa so you're still on the e-brake and release the clutch the best thing that can happen to you is that the, just the engine dies so it stops working but the worst thing <laughs> that can happen is that you probably break your drive shafts your prop shaft or maybe your clutch or your gearbox we also use it for example for initiation with a clutch kick that means we are still on throttle there's full load on the drive drain and then we just press the clutch, the RPM of the engine increases, there's more momentum created and as soon as you release the clutch again. Next thing um, is if you like, yeah, in a drift and you want to adjust your line or your wheel speed quite quickly. So one thing you can do, you can always modulate the throttle pedal and try to increase or decrease the rpm but sometimes this is not fast enough and then you use like half clutch so you let the clutch slip a tiny bit to just increase the rpm by yeah the amount you you think you need for keeping your line or for adjusting your line and that's what you also use and this is quite tough on the clutch so the clutch kicking and also the massaging the clutch is really really tough on the clutch because the clutch kicking is basically you have load on the clutch um, 
in our case around a thousand newton meters or above thousand newton meters and then you all of a sudden when you press it all this torque is off the clutch and in the next split second it's on the clutch again so it's a really like a hard hit on the clutch this is really tough on the material and the massaging the clutch so letting the clutch slip a bit is yeah another thing that the clutch is really heavily loaded but this time in thermal because the clutch doesn't wear if it's either pressed or released because then there's no movement between the clutch and the flywheel or the pressure pressure plate we will get into what this is later on so normally if you have the the pedal pressed or released there's no wear the clutch always wears when it slips so in the case you you leave the clutch always slips a bit so you're standing at a at a red light here for example you are on your clutch pedal you put in first gear and then you slowly release the clutch and it starts to slip and this is always when it starts to wear but in a normal situation you don't have high torque and high load on the clutch when you leave um, for example the, the line however as soon as you're in drifting <laughs> and being in for example fifth gear in a long turn and you want to modulate your rpm and you just leave it slip a bit there's a lot of torque on the clutch and in like no time the the slipping clutch creates a lot of heat like really a lot of heat so we arrived here and i would say let's go inside let's check it out let us start at our band saw okay with yeah. a rough material so that's basically how all starts for a flywheel yeah, correct. okay that looks impressive this fat body <laughs> comes to us and we can shorten it down in pieces for every product that we want to do or well, big bands can handle that one so that's the the main pieces where the flywheels get milled out afterwards how heavy is that can i lift it all one can be lifted Whoa, yeah. so the whole thing weighs how much about 2.5 tons <laughs> That's more yes. than a car. It also depends on the diameter. The whole diameter is about 280. It's approximately from 240 up to 350. Okay. Depending on the flywheel we have to make. You chop this here and what's the next step then? The next step is over here on mm -hmm. our turning machine. So we have some pieces here. Mm -hmm. The first step is to make depends on the product looks like this one it also depends on the model or not maybe it comes out complete ready but to get it more efficient we make it with a milling machine as well so it's a small milling departure here okay three milling machines mm -hmm. and every milling machine has some special things to do over here it's just for flywheels looks like this one you get the shape out of it okay so here are the structures that are not fully circular so like these ones, the holes and everything. And also we have some small CNC machines mm -hmm. making for our clutch sets the torsional damper. So it's like the first side, mm -hmm. the raw material is over here. And then it will come out with the teeth inside. Okay. Also can come out like a ready product, but to get it more faster, we have more machines. So you actually also mill the machines, uh, the, the teeth inside here, or do you... They get punched. Get punched, okay, yeah. So here's a place where our torsional damper comes to life. Different types of dampers, different pieces, specially made for every application. We have different springs, different friction material. We all can put together like the customer wants to have. Okay, so maybe for the people that are not familiar with torsional dampers, now talking about the clutch plate that is mounted between the flywheel and the pressure plate and has the friction material on the outside and in the inside the hub can be either rigid, so solid, and then as soon as you release the clutch the load gets transferred directly or you can have a torsional damper like this one with the springs inside, so I'm just demonstrating that but we see it later how it yes. looks together and uh, these springs then damp when you put the the load on the clutch 
there's a little movement that they can do and they like yeah just flatten the peaks of the torque out so as you said you have like different options to really make the damper for the customer so if he yes. has like 400 newton meters you have a different thing than he has 800 newton meters or something Correct. like that let's start with the spring mm -hmm. we have different ones mm -hmm. for big boost that's a smaller one mm -hmm. or just for a tiny one it's about <laughs> 300 <laughs> So th this is also very important because if you would use such a spring in a really high powered car or high torque car, the spring would just go to its uh, compressed lengths and then you also have a shock load through, yes. through your damper. Yes. So that's why it's really important that you have the right spring size in that. And you also can make different diameters as well, small ones, big ones depending on the load, depending also on the space we have. Mm -hmm. So big one means you can transfer more load, I and guess. Right, yeah. more load and it's better to get the heat away. Ah, that's also one very important point. I already told you at the beginning, um, in drifting we have a lot of heat and a lot of load. And if you have more material that can take the heat, yeah, then you end up with a, with a higher diameter. However, one thing you have to say, if you have a bigger diameter, you increase your mass and uh, the inertia, like if you, if you go on the throttle, it takes a bit longer for the engine to respond. Yes. Um, but in my eyes, I rather have a little bit too big of a diameter and have more capacity for heat and load than having a small diameter and having issues with my clutch. Yes. Can you combine with several discs? So and not go, going uh, uh, to the big diameters? Uh, good question. This is a really good small question. One. <laughs> and, and more of them. Yeah, so I think the, the question you're asking is if you only can use single disc or also multiple discs. So I think... Sure, you yeah. can uh, mix together whatever you want. In the end, it's um, important what are you going to do with your clutch or with your car. Mm -hmm. um, if you say you're going to... to or going to make two synthetic discs, will be very heavily, but can transmit a lot of power. If you go for two organic discs, it also can transmit a lot of power. The driving is very good, but if you make hard clutch kicks or just go through a drag slip, it's quite better to take the synth one. One point that I find really interesting, I haven't knew about it, so if you have less um, pads on a synthetic disc, it gets more aggressive when you Your release the clutch. Driving is yeah. more bumpy. Ah, very interesting. I didn't knew about that. So, not a not a cool fact here. So we have uh, storage for some organic materials, different diameter, different thickness as well. Pads. That pads we use to for a clutch system. And the cinder material is not the cinder material. There are different components mixed together. And also, if you have more iron in your cinder pad, it's more or better for take more power, but not as good to drive. Again, makes me, makes me happy to see the final product. I'm, I'm getting a bit curious, but I don't want to rush. So uh, what, what would be the next step? We have to balance everything. Okay. To so find balancing, we can show you over here. Okay. But also, we can start maybe with the crankshaft if you want. Cool, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. let's have a look. So, Martin is preparing the flywheel you will drive and also the crankshaft you can see on the balancing machine. That's the crankshaft of the engine. And this is the flywheel that will be mated to it. The important thing is that if you want to have it really balanced, you should balance your flywheel on the crankshaft. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. It's about the gap between crank and flywheel. So you always can put a flywheel on the crank. And you must have little gap so that you wouldn't have, you can't uh, mount it. And the gap means you have it, put it here or here, and then we'll start like that one. And that's the way we balance this gap away. Non-balanced flywheel, it can start to vibrate really, really hard, especially on high RPM. Um, it can be so bad that parts of the engine will fall apart. We had it once 
in our car uh, where a flywheel yeah, got a bit damaged and was unbalanced and it took only one and a half laps uh, until I think uh, like a cover of the water jacket came off the car loose on the engine. So this is quite heavy. So what are you looking here? So you drive the crankshaft actually, you, you spin it up? That's correct. We spin up to about 1000 RPM. And we have two sensors on every uh, side for measuring out the vibrations. And according to the speed, the machine can tell us how much imbalance we will have. The imbalance of every plane. Mm -hmm. First plane is about 150, second plane is 160 gram to millimeter radius. So normally then you work on the crankshaft with these yes. values and you try to uh, get them as low as possible. So you're yes, taking you off material. You can take off material by drilling or over the flex or whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. You can grind down or put material on. So that was quite a lot of input, I would say. And here, if I'm not mistaken, we have more or less many of the clutch options, not all of them, but many of the clutch options uh, yes, that you can produce. Yeah, yeah. Right. I try to start with the easy things okay. that, that I can distinguish. So black, organic, orange, brown, Sinter material. Sinter material. That's easy for me. Then this one is a rigid hub because there are no um, springs inside. Yes. And this is a sprung hub. Yes. And now I'm at the end. <laughs> so now you can take over. All the applications we can deliver or you can choose. It's double organic. You also can have one organic and one center or double center. So, That's so this one fits on this one then here. Yes. Oh, wait, wrong way round. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can see double center if you want. What are we doing with the system for our drift cars? What what would you propose us to do? I would propose to have two identical cars yep. so we can try two different setups. Okay. Yeah. So one time I would say you take double center for one setup mm -hmm. and the other one is double center, uh, double organic for the other car. Okay. So we can see if something is wearing out or where are some hot spots or what's better for your drivability. Cool. That sounds sounds awesome. Because if I'm not mistaken, this one is a used one, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah, I drive in my car for, I guess, 2000 kilometer okay. at least. And you can't see any. You still see signs on it. The writing. Yes, what, the what, what, what power level, what torque are about you driving? About 700. 700 Newton meters? Correct. 2000 kilometers and it's... it's like nothing. This is like almost new. Yeah, the writing is still there. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm really looking forward because um, I haven't used an organic clutch in drifting, I think, for eight years. Um, but it, it sounds promising. And uh, I think the, the really good benefit is that the organic material is way smoother to the flywheel and to the pressure blade because yes. it's not as aggressive as the center because normally after one season of drifting we have to resurface our flywheel and we have to resurface or change the pressure blade because uh, it's really aggressive and it just grabs into the, the metal and with an organic clutch if it works we could probably run it for almost forever <laughs> it's time for our clutch kit and we have the components here so again we have a flywheel our kit is a twin disc kit with a sprung hub with a intermediate disc in between the two discs and i think we haven't not really haven't told why we use two discs so if you end up with one disc and let's say this one can handle 700 newton meters but you want to have 1200 newton meters on it yes then you can basically take two discs <clears throat> you can take two discs there are three different options okay to get more loud out of your clutch it's Friction material, if you have organic one or you have a sintered one, mm -hmm. sintered one um, has more friction, so you can, or it can take more load. You can also um, 
make a higher load from your pressure plate. Ah, so from this component. Yes, great. So this one is a more or less stock one. And this one, if I'm not mistaken, is a um, performance one. Yes, yes, yes. Um, why, why don't you use every time a performance one with a high clamping load? Um, performance one means you also have a harder clutch pedal. Ah. So it's much harder. If you have your daily and you put in a harder pressure plate and you come into a traffic jam, we feel your, 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 <laughs> your legs. Okay, okay. Um, and there's another way to get more capacity out of your clutch. That means we had the friction, we had um, the clamping load, and we also have surface. That means double surface, double load. Ah. So now you also know why we ended up with two discs, because uh, we had our engine on a dyno and it put out almost 1400 Newton meters. We probably will reduce that a bit in the car to around 1100 newton meters, but it's still a lot. Um, so that's why we ended up with a twin plate disc. So the first um, friction disc is inside the disc already. And here the intermediate disc will come on. This is just to show you guys how it really gets assembled. But if you order something here, you will get it assembled. So you don't have to do that. It's just that you see how it how it is done. That's how you get a customer. Customer will get the set. It's ready to bolt on. You put this one to your crankshaft, bolt it on. And if it's on your crank, you just have to put in your torsional damper inside and then put on the pressure plate. If I'm not uh, fully wrong, you even think about making a double mass flywheel for motorsports use. Is that right? Oh, we have something with dual mass okay. or a billet DMF. If you want, I can show you something. Probably the last topic for today, but it's a really exciting one. I try to get everyone on board. So in motorsports, it's more or less common practice to have a single mass flywheel so there's just one piece and you have the shape that you have and it's working in road cars you normally have a dual mass flywheel so you have two masses and they are connected with some yeah let's call them springs and dampers and they can move against each other and for what do you need that that's mainly comfort because your engine produces some let's say yeah vibrations and if you wouldn't have the dual mass flywheel, you would feel them at certain RPM in the car. And it's like, in the worst scenario, it can be really, really loud, like really everything starts to shake. And that's why you normally have a dual mass flywheel. Dual mass flywheel is for once really heavy. That's one thing you don't want in motorsports. And two, it has a limitation in the torque that it can transmit. And if you go above the limitation, it will make like this clock. And that's also not good. So that's why most of the motorsport application have a, just a single mass flywheel. They live with the noise in the car and the vibrations because it's a race car. You don't drive 800 kilometers with it. So, but Kai was really, really, really eager to engineer something that maybe can get best of both worlds together. Developed the uh, billet DMF we made together with Federtechnik Knötze, Mr. Thomas Knötze. Um, so let's have a look at this one. It's uh, for Volkswagen DSG gearbox DQ250, also 350 and DQ500 available soon. We made a billet one. Billet one means our Damping rate is much higher than the original one. Original is approximately 550 or 600 maybe. We are about to get 1,100. And we need to check the weight of it. The weight of the original one That's less than half of it. 
and also we are developing out not only for the automatic gearbox also for different one like we have in here it's for Volkswagen Golf 6 GTI DMF system and not only and not only the DMF also with B disc system so you can handle a lot of power and drive uh, very comfortable not only comfortable it's also approximately three up to four kilo um, not as heavy as a stock one to sum that up you basically reduced the weight by more than 50 percent but you raised the torque capability by more than 100 percent so you have double the torque cap capacity in Correct. a part that weighs half of this one yeah that's right wow this is this is amazing and then you also have that for manual transmission uh, so it wouldn't help you to just have a flywheel that can take a lot of torque yes. if you don't have a clutch thank you very much kai martin it was amazing for me being here seeing all that and this one was basically the the icing on the cake uh, to see <laughs> this nice nice thing and i'm really looking forward if you can manage to to get it in the shape of the flywheel that we need in our drift cars so guys, thank you very much for joining us. And I would say see you next time. And yeah, we keep you updated with all the systems if we have them in our cars and how they perform. So thank you very much. Peace out.